release of the Raspberry Pi 4 came with a tremendous step up in CPU processing power. The CPU is now a Broadcom quad-core CPU running at 1.5 gigahertz. Of course, with the much more powerful CPU, we now have much higher temperatures coming off of that CPU, and the Raspberry Pi 4 has a set throttle at 80 degrees Celsius. So when you're running applications and pushing the Raspberry Pi 4 to its limit, you have to have some level of heat dissipation. In this video, we're gonna talk about two types of heat dissipation. The first one is heat sinks, right? So these metal heat sinks that go right on top of the CPU and the GPU. In fact, this one, the, the Raspberry Pi 4 heatsink kit comes with a third heatsink that I have down here by the power as well. Another option is this right here. Now this is the Pi Maroni fan shim. Let's see if I can get that to focus. There we go. And this thing is absolutely amazing. So I've tested both of these, right? And I can tell you for sure, spoiler alert, the Pi Maroni fan shim is a lot better than heat sinks. Uh, how much better? Well, let's get to that testing. Now, there is a third method that people have used to cool down the CPU on the Raspberry Pi, and that is water cooling. <laughs> but to me, that just gets a little bit ridiculous, and when you have to have a rig sitting off the top of your Raspberry Pi that's bigger than the Raspberry Pi itself, I just don't think that's a very realistic way of doing cooling. So, of course, in order to test anything, we have to be able to measure. So let's go ahead and figure out first how do we measure CPU temperature on the Raspberry Pi 4? In this video, we're gonna show how to measure both CPU and GPU temperatures. The GPU temperature is actually really, really easy to get. You just have to run this one command, and that is vcgencmd space measure underscore temp. And that gives us our temperature of the GPU in degrees Celsius. At this point, uh, I'm running at 49 degrees Celsius. And by the way, I'm starting on the heat sink version of the Raspberry Pi 4. CPU temperature is a little bit tougher to get, but it's really not that hard. Uh, we can say cat slash sys slash class slash thermal slash thermal underscore zone zero slash temp. And this gives us a five digit number, which is also a reading of Celsius, but we need to divide that number by 1000. Okay, so in order to do that, let's set this as a variable CPU. So we're gonna say CPU equals dollar sign, open parentheses, less than, and then we wanna type that same command, slash sys, slash class, slash thermal, thermal zone zero slash temp, and then close parentheses. So we're basically setting the string CPU as a variable that just runs that command anytime you output CPU. So if I say echo CPU or dollar sign CPU, it should show us the current temperature uh, that we then need to divide by 1000. So I can now say echo uh, quotes dollar sign parentheses, parentheses, CPU divided by 1000, close parentheses, close parentheses, and then we can say like degrees Celsius like that, and then close our quotes and enter, and now we have 53 degrees Celsius. So that's all well and good, but now how can we create a script that shows both the CPU and GPU temperature that we can then refresh on a regular basis in order to see the temperature over time. Now we're not gonna graph the temperature over time. There are ways to do that, but in this case, we're just testing. We just wanna be able to see or watch the temperature in real time, as opposed to you know graph a history of all of the temperatures you know for all time. So in this case, we're just gonna say, uh, there's a great script out there. I'll give credit where credit is due. The author was Vivek Geit from cybercity.biz. And I will put a link to the article where I found this script down below so that you guys can benefit from it as well. And we're gonna say, um, you wanna create a new script called my-temp.sh. You can call it really whatever you want. I called mine my-temp.sh. So let's go in here. And I'm going to edit that file. Uh, here we see the author, Vivek Geit. And so what we're doing here is the first line here, we are 
setting that CPU variable, just like we did previously. And then we're gonna echo the date and the host name. Then we're gonna have a nice little line separator. And then we're gonna say the GPU is, and then we're gonna do that command, VG, VC gen CMD measure temp, just like we did previously for the GPU temperature. And then for the CPU, we're gonna basically do the same thing where we're uh, echoing it out divided by a thousand. Okay, so now let's control exit. And what you wanna do when you first create the script is make sure you do a chmod plus x my-temp.sh. Excuse me, sudo ch chmod. So you can do sudo chmod plus x my-temp.sh. And now it is an executable file. If I do lsla, we can see my-temp.sh is green, meaning that it's executable. And if we run it, dot slash my-temp.sh, we can see an output of our temperature, which is great, except we'd like to actually watch that output and have it refresh on a certain interval, say two seconds, right? So in order to do that, we can use the watch command. So now we can say watch dot slash my dash temp dot sh. And there we go. You get a two second update of this command, uh, just constantly updating. So now when we run our stress test, we will be able to watch this command and watch as the temperature of both the CPU and the GPU go up as we're watching it. Okay, so let's go ahead and minimize this down. I'm gonna open a new window. And in this window, I'm just gonna set up HTOP, okay? So we can see that right now our CPU is idling. Uh, we don't have too much going on currently. And our uh, GPU temp is about 64 degrees Celsius. Our CPU temp is about 62 degrees Celsius, uh, just sitting here at idle. Okay, so now, Let's stress test. I'm gonna open up a third window. And in this third window, if you don't have stress, you can install it by saying sudo apt uh, install stress. I already have stress, so we don't need to do that. But we can now say stress dash C8. Okay, so this is going to run eight CPU threads as a stress test. And as soon as I hit this button, we're going to see the CPU here just peg all the way at 100%. All four cores are gonna peg at 100%. And then we are gonna to start to see the CPU and the GPU temperature start to climb. And what I'm gonna do is time it, and I'll let you know how long it takes with heat sinks on the Raspberry Pi before we start throttling, right? And you know you start throttling because you actually see a little temperature icon in the upper right-hand corner of your primary monitor on the Raspberry Pi, so in the Raspberry Pi graphical user interface. Okay, so let's go ahead and run the stress test. Here we go, boom. And we can see that immediately our CPU gets maxed out. All four cores get maxed out at 100% and we're already climbing. We're already up to 70 degrees Celsius. And let me get my stopwatch going. All right, so I started the stopwatch about 30 seconds late, but we should be able to, I'm just gonna keep an eye on this and I will come back once the CPU actually starts throttling. So once we actually hit 80 degrees Celsius. Okay, so I first saw that little temperature thermometer icon throttling the CPU in the upper right-hand corner of my Pi GUI right at about two minutes and 10 seconds. Now keep in mind that it took an extra 30 seconds or so uh, for me to fire up the stopwatch here. So figure about two and a half minutes of stress testing the Raspberry Pi 4 with heat sinks before it hit the point where it had to start throttling down the CPU. All right, so let's go ahead and kill that test. Also, just as a side note, when I fire this little um, temperature heat gun thing at the heat sink, uh, the main CPU heat sink on the Raspberry Pi 4, while this stress test is going, I'm getting between 40 to 50 degrees Celsius just shooting it from the top, okay? So it only gets about that hot externally to the CPU, externally to the heat sink, because it is dissipating a good amount of heat. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and stop this test. I'm gonna hit Control C on stress. We'll see the CPU drop all the way back down, and then our temperatures will start coming down once again. Now I'm gonna switch over to the Raspberry Pi that has the Pi Maroni fan shim. All right, while that's booting up, let's take a look at the fan shim itself. Uh, it is $10 USD from PyMaroni.com. It comes in this little teeny tiny box. I bought two of them, uh, plus a case as well, and I think my total was like $27, including shipping and everything. So it wasn't that much. 
Uh, but you basically get this tiny little fan and you get all the screws that you need. And you also get this tiny little board that slips over some of the Raspberry Pi GPIO pins. Okay, so you attach the fan to this board and I'm not gonna do this on camera because honestly, their instructions, if you click at the getting started with fan shim instructions, they're really, really good, right? It's so super simple. Here's the board, you put the screws through it, you put some spacers in it, washer spacers. Now these ones are plastic. The ones that I came with are a little bit higher quality than the ones in these pictures. This must have been from a prototype or something. Then you put the fan on, then you put additional washers on top to secure everything down, and you plug the fan in. You slip the whole thing over the one, two, three, four, five, six uh, sort of leftmost GPIO pins. This is gonna provide it power, as well as some of the input that it needs to actually control the fan with Python. Then you can install the fan shim software. It's as easy as doing a git clone right here. And then you can just run install service.sh and then 65 and five. Now what that means is basically we're gonna run this as a service. So every time the Raspberry Pi boots up, it will run this fan, uh, Pi Moroni fan service, which you can start and stop with systemctl start or stop Pi Moroni dash fan shim dot service. And the 65 is the temperature which, at which we want the fan to turn on. And then five degrees Celsius is the hysteresis, hysteresis. And it's basically a buffer that says, once the fan's on, let it drop down five degrees Celsius before it turns off again, right? So that way it's not like if you're sort of flickering between 79 and 80 degrees Celsius, or in this case, 64 and 65 degrees Celsius, it's not gonna be constantly turning the fan on and off. It's gonna hit 65 and it'll stay on until it drops below 60. Uh, there are also some more examples of how you can you know, use Python to control the fan as well as control the LEDs on the fan board itself. I'm not gonna go into that into this tutorial. Let's just get right on to the stress testing. All right, so in this first window, we're gonna say watch dot slash my dash temp dot sh. That's gonna give us our CPU temperatures. Here we can see 51 degrees Celsius on the CPU and 50, well, 51 degrees Celsius also on the GPU. Let's run an H top down below. And now we're gonna say sudo stress dash C eight and hit enter. We're also gonna start our stopwatch. Once this hits 65 degrees Celsius, oh, there it goes. Okay, so the fan just kicked on right at exactly 65 degrees Celsius. And uh, so now we're gonna let this run for a while and see if we ever end up throttling or if it at some point will sort of level off and then never hit that 80 degrees Celsius mark where we do start throttling. All right, so I'm gonna keep an eye on this and we will be back in just a little bit. All right, so here we go, eight minutes and 50 seconds into this test, and uh, I already know the results. It is just going up to 65 degrees, the fan's kicking on, it's bringing the CPU temperature back down to like 59, 58, the fan turns off, and then it goes back up, rinse and repeat, okay? So it's doing the same thing over and over and over, but the point being is that with the Pimeroni fan shim in place, no heat sinks, okay, just the fan shim, we are able to make sure that the CPU on the Raspberry Pi 4 is never throttling at all. Okay, now there may be some use cases where you're pushing that CPU so hard that you get up to the point of throttling even with the fan shim, but in this stress test where I'm literally maxing the CPU at 100%, all four cores at 100%, I'm not able to get to the 80 degree Celsius threshold uh, where it would actually start throttling. So. Kudos to Pi Maroni for making a good product. Uh, I really like this thing. I bought two of them and I'm definitely gonna run them on both of my Raspberry Pi 4s. I'm gonna rip off the heat sinks and use these instead. Okay, there you have it. If you guys are interested in any of these products, click the links down below. I have a kit down there to the Canakit Raspberry Pi starter kit, which I highly recommend if you're just getting into Raspberry Pi as well as a link to the Pi Moroni fan shim. And check out the rest of their website as well. They've got a lot of cases and add-ons and other cool Raspberry Pi stuff uh, available on their website. Okay, so there you guys have it. A quick look at some heat testing of the Raspberry Pi 4. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, we have more Raspberry Pi content coming soon. 
make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Okay, as always, my name is Chris with Crosstalk Solutions, and thank you so much for watching.